Um, let's get started. Uh, the first talk is by Walter Verhelst about using the Belgian EID card in Debian. Thank you. Thank you. Um, finishing a few things, but um, <coughs> I'll just do my bit here. You need to listen to me. Thank you. Belgian ID cards, uh, I'll <coughs> start with a short history of about what it is. We've had ID cards actually since during the war. The Germans gave us ID cards and we just didn't throw them away. We kept them. Um, of course, they weren't electronic all the time, but um, it's been done in Belgium for quite some time. Um, everyone starting from the age of 12 has an ID card in Belgium, but they're not required to have them at all times yet. That only is true from the age of 15. Um, there is extensive privacy law in Belgium that prevents some abuse, such as uh, the fact that only the police is allowed to require me to hand over my ID card. Every, everybody else can ask, but I can tell them to screw themselves. Um, so that prevents some abuse and makes sure that uh, my privacy isn't entirely compromised by the fact that I have an ID card. Um, electronic ID cards, we have those since 2004, and in a test phase, I think 2004, right? Yeah, in a test phase before that a bit. Um, there are smart cards, cards, they are all based on open standards. Um, it's not a totally open card, but the, 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 the bits that matter are, are completely open. Um, it contains all the data which was traditionally printed on, the, on, on ID cards, and there's some more stuff on that, such as uh, uh, certifica certificates and, and, and crypto stuff like that. Um, but it has some new privacy issues of its own, and I'm personally not very happy with that, but Okay, in any case, those privacy issues are not really what this talk is about. This is more about the technical uh, things which are interesting uh, well, from a package point of view and, and for a user, how, to, how you can actually use these cards with Debian. The card itself is some Java thing. I don't know what they exactly call it, but it uses some Java code on the smart card itself. And this Java code implements a subset of uh, some standards, PKCS 15 and PKCS 11, sorry, Dutch. Uh, PKCS 11, which are um, standards on how you work with, open, with smart cards. Uh, I believe PKCS 15 defines a file system and 11 defines cryptography, but I'm not entirely sure, uh, sure about that. In any, in any case, uh, these are relevant standards that are used on the card. Uh, I say a subset because, for instance, it's not possible to modify um, the data of, about your identity, which is fairly reasonable. It's also not possible to modify um, the certificates on the card, which is understandable, um, and given the, the background of the card, also, not, also fairly reasonable. Um, it has some semi-weird pin requirements. Um, the, if you use the card and you want to sign something, uh, you need to issue your PIN right before that. With other cards, it's usually possible to log into the card and then you can sign several documents if you want that. It is not possible with the EID card. Um, the idea behind that was, uh, if you sign something with a card, this can be a legally binding signature. And you don't want someone to trick you into believing you signed a payment and then also sign, have you sign you a contract of a million euros or something. So it, it, it's re reasonable, that's why I call it semi-weird, but it's pretty weird in that um, not many software today understands this. So sometimes you can have issues with software which doesn't really know that, uh, that pin requirement and then if you do this too often they try to uh, sign documents which doesn't work, try it again, doesn't work and then eventually your card will get blocked and you need to get, go to the uh, to the city hall to get it unblocked again, which is something you need to look out for. Um, there are two certificates as well, um, one for authentication and one for signatures. Uh, the, the idea is that you can sign with the signature certificate and not with the authentication certificate. And you can log on to systems with the authentication certificate, but not with the signature certificate. And there, are, there is some software who doesn't look at the properties that are set on the certificates and will just use the signature certificates to, to log on to a server or vice versa, which is not the idea. Um, so there are some, there's some software which is confused. Um, the identity data is just a regular file on the 
PKCS15 file system. Uh, you can read that with <coughs> uh, just uh, PKCS15 uh, calls and, and, and interpret it. The, the format of the file is, is specified in the specification of the card. Um, but you don't need to, to do that. For the client-side software, there is some software provided with the card, which you can download from uh, the government website. The cryptographic parts are just uh, implemented as a patch on OpenSC. First of all, a patch because you need to uh, have the, yeah? OpenSC? OpenSC is Open Smart Card uh, Framework. It's a free software for smart card framework, sorry. Um, so if you, this is just regular OpenSC. Um, the, there is a belt pick driver which is, an, a, which is able to uh, communicate with this specific card. And um, because they have this drive, you can actually uh, connect to it. Um, the patch has been submitted to OpenSC by the government themselves, and most of it is accepted and is in there. Not everything, though. Um, that's what I said. Um, not everything is uh, uh, accepted because of the weird pin requirements. They want to have a callback from the library so that if you get at some situation where you need to enter additional, uh, an additional pin, they don't want to um, leave that to the application which is using the library because if you do that then the application might uh, fake a pin dialog and that's not the idea. So the library itself uh, will show, a Q, uh, by use of Qt, will show a uh, pin dialog and then you can enter a pin code. This of course rules out any console use. You can only use it in Rx, this library. Uh, there is a higher level API in libbid uh, for data retrieval. They used to call this libeid, um, which is a fairly reasonable name, but then I suggest that maybe you should have some, uh, because of namespace issues, you should perhaps call it bid, and they liked that idea, so they changed it. Um, the server side is no special requirement, really. Uh, uh, it's just all plain old SSL, um, and if you want to set up a website using uh, EID, uh, the, to communicate with EID, all you need to do is set up um, uh, uh, SSL certificate authentication, which is fairly standard. The only problem uh, is that since there are already 5 million of these cards issued, um, there are also some revocations, and quite some revocations actually, about, I think about 2%. 2% of 5 million is quite a lot of numbers. So doing this with certificate revocation lists is not manageable. There are lists, there are uh, CRLs, but it's just not manageable. And there is this other uh, protocol called OCSP, Online Certificate Status Protocol, which is a protocol where you just connect to a server and say, I've got this signature, is this still valid? And the server will re reply with yes or no. Uh, so you don't need to get the, the CRLs and you don't need everything on your local hard disk. Uh, the only problem is that Multisazel in Apache doesn't yet support OCSP. Uh, there is a patch, but it's not been integrated. It will eventually be integrated, but at the moment it's not integrated. But if you want to set up, uh, you can actually download the, the CRLs and you can do some stuff there. Uh, but as I said, there's no special requirement, so that's not really packaged because, yeah, well. Um, every, all software to read the cards, this is very nice. Uh, all software to read the cards, that is this, these two libraries, um, some user space applications that they already provide. It's all free, all free software, all packaged in Debian. So that's very good. <coughs> Um, however, there are some issues with it. For instance, um, the Qt library, the library uses some Qt callbacks, and then they wrote the application using WX widgets, uh, which also pulls in GTK. So I've got uh, build dependency list from here, from here to Tokyo, which is not very nice. Um, they sometimes hard code things where this is really not necessary, such as um, they have some something like if dev Linux, then the configuration directory is user local etc, which is totally unnecessary. You can do this better using um, build time uh, specifications or something like that. Um, we patched those all away, but then they're hard coded somewhere else, of course, because I didn't re uh, invent the build system, especially not seeing how they use uh, SCONS as a build system. They used AutoMake, but they didn't like that, and they switched to SCONS, and I can tell you I really, really don't like SCONS. Um, <coughs> The, the people who wrote the software, that's uh, Zetas, which is a company which was uh, contracted by the government. Um, they are, their specialty is smart cards and, and stuff like that, so they are very knowledgeable about, uh, about the stuff, but not very knowledgeable about, about developing open source software, and it shows. Um, so, client-side requirements, of course you need one of these. 
smart card reader. Without a smart card reader, obviously, you can't read smart cards. So um, to be able to read a smart card uh, from, a, from a reader, of course, you still need some software, um, some middleware. Uh, that can be either OpenSC, oh, sorry, PCSC or OpenCT. They are both middlewares to read um, uh, smart cards. Um, the government actually only supports PCSC, um, but OpenSC supports way more, and they threw those all out. Now, the, when they first did that, the problem was that this one uses OpenCT, and because I can only test if there's only OpenCT in there, I, I just put it in again, but I, I didn't test everything. Uh, they didn't put it, uh, all the other middleware drivers in again. So if you want to use the Belgian uh, EID cards in Debian, you need to have a smart card reader, which is supported by either PCSC or OpenCT. Now, if you buy a, a, a smart card reader in Belgium, it's usually uh, marketed as an EID card reader, and they are an ACR uh, 38U driver. Um, so if you buy one from the government, you, you need, uh, you've got one of those chipsets um, that also requires an additional library to be installed so that PCSC can communicate it with it, which is also packaged, but not by me. Someone else has done that. That um, I, uh, libpid, libopenSC2, uh, has a suggestion for that specific library so that if you install it, you get the suggestion that you might need it. Um, then, yeah, it's, it runs this uh, daemon, Bell PCSCD, and uh, the idea of it is that... Um, if some application tries to access your smart card, um, spyware, whatever, then you've, uh, this might be a privacy leak. So they have, uh, under Windows, they've got this system tray application. And every time an application tries to access the smart card, you get a dialog saying, from that system tray application saying, hey, somebody's trying to access your smart card. Do you want to uh, allow that? They wanted to implement the same thing on Linux, but it's not entirely working because the problem is you cannot have a system tray application locking a smart card. So what they did is they run a daemon. Um, but of course, a daemon can't access X, so they have the library access X once, once you call to talk to a daemon. But I've been thinking about it, and it, it doesn't really make sense to me, because if you have a, a, a rogue library that just talks to the daemon and then says, yeah, yeah, I, I've shown a dialogue to the, client, to the user, and, and he says all is okay, while all is not okay, then you've totally bypassed the security system. So it doesn't really work, in my opinion. Anyway, um, and then of course, there's some useful software. There's a Firefox plugin. There's a GUI package to read the cards and, and, and print out the data on there and, and everything. Um, so BID GUI, I'll give a demo in a few seconds. This is a graphical interface to the cards, which allows you to read the, uh, uh, the data on the card and, and show it to users. Um, and yeah, you can print the data. You can also change your pin there. So, oh, I'm too fast. I'll just give you the demo now. to put my card in first. BID GUI. It's um, saying that I ca it can't open PCSE Live, but that's all right. This is not all right. OK, I need to add myself to the right group. Hang on. Um, I hadn't tested that. No, that will not work. Uh, I'll show you in a minute why. Um, well, I should be in the group S card to be able to read smart cards in the Linux, but that requires me to log off and on again. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, It should work. <coughs> Let's try. OK. Yeah, it, it is indeed saying this message, um, but that's because they've uh, got a different idea about how localization works. Uh, as I said, they're not very uh, comfortable with uh, uh, open source software, and it really shows. I can, I can use uh, Dutch here or whatever, but it also means um, that uh, if you want to do additional translations, it just won't work because they've got uh, bid GUI underscore nl dot mo and bid GUI underscore fr dot mo. So it really, really doesn't work the way it should. Anyway, reading a card is this way. Ah, grab it. Damn it.
Mm-hmm. All right, I may have to restart OpenCT because. Uh, C process is killed. You see what I mean? Uh, okay. Well, it it it's supposed to work. <laughs> um, it works better in unstable. Really, uh, there are some issues in in stable as well because uh, again one of the things is they try to for the plugin they try to open the dot uh, so file rather than dot so dot so version file so that's not very good either um, I'll just while I'm talking uh, I should have tested this sorry I'll just log off and because This will take well. Uh, so, well, the the other thing is they also have a, a, a Firefox plugin. I'll demonstrate that in, in a second as well, um, which uh, allows you to read the cards. You need to register the, the card first before you do that. I'll, I'll show you that as well. And with that, you can, for instance, log on to the uh, government website and do your tax declaration there, or um, go to the, the national register website and uh, get all sorts of very, very private things. For instance, in my case, um, it shows that I drove slightly too hard a few years ago and that I had to see a judge before I could get my license again. <laughs> Stuff like that. <coughs> um, and yeah, then there's also the uh, development libraries. Uh, the EID develop, BAID development library is uh, documented in a PDF on their website. But it's really very simple. It only gives things like uh, read the picture or read the name and address or um, uh, give me certificates, stuff like that. So it's, it's very, very high level. And I believe there's only 10 calls or something in the library, so it's not very complicated. Large font. Hopefully this will work now, and otherwise I'll just give up. <laughs> so this was normal because I don't have a PCIC card reader. If I do have a PCIC card reader, I need to install uh, these libraries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a shame. Do you want another reader? Uh, I don't know the other reader. Anyway, so that's a real shame. So uh, there's also a BID CRLD, uh, uh, CRLD here, which will download CRLs um, if you allow it to. Uh, this is the last attempt. If this doesn't work, it's 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 over. <laughs> I can still some show some more things, but uh, I'm not going to waste time on this. Anymore. Okay. Uh, because if it was right, it would show uh, that it has a smart card, and this is just uh, uh, this is something OpenCT does. It gives you five empty smart card readers, but they're not really connected. If this were was actually connected, it would find it. Uh, it works on my laptop. <laughs> anyway, uh, so there's also, as I said, I can I can show that. Um, uh, um, there is a an, an a plugin for uh, maybe I show that first. There is a plugin for um, uh, Firefox and, and similar web browsers, and which also works on Ice Weasel. Um, <laughs> uh, except if you, for instance, if you go to the uh, 
the tax declaration website with iSuite, it will say you're not running Firefox or uh, or uh, Internet Explorer, but it, it's not really a big deal because you can actually still uh, open it. You can you can you can still uh, go to the website. It just gives you a warning that it's not supported and stuff might break, but stuff of course doesn't break. Um, yes, the card. This was not planned. Yeah? Is there a specific reason why you want to use uh, OpenCT instead of PCSC? Uh, well, this card reader doesn't work with, OPC, with PCSC. That's what I said earlier. That's why I, I included OpenCT in there rather than PCSC alone. Because, well, my card reader, I could buy a new one, of course. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, um, I've shown that. Okay, so there's a Gecko plugin, which is part of the, the of this package, uh, the, the, the actual OpenSC library. Uh, it doubles as a plugin, really, so it's got just the library and also the plugin bits. And then there's this file. If you open that in your browser, um, it will run some JavaScript and, and enable the plugin. Um, you get a warning, of course. It doesn't do this without you noticing, but you get a... a uh, and once you've done that, you can actually access... Um, of course, it doesn't work in Eisdorf, or Thunderbird, for those of you who don't use Debian. But uh, the module itself, the, uh, the, the library, can actually be loaded there. So you can also sign emails with the card, which is nice. Um, signing emails, authenticate the website. Um, and then there's also OpenSC utilities. As I said, parts of the library have been uh, accepted into, uh, into OpenSC core. And you can actually use it to sign text files from the command line with these uh, command line uh, utilities. Um, of course, OpenSC, as said, doesn't know about the semi-weird uh, pin requirements. So if, if you fuck up, you may end up blocking <coughs> your card. But since these are command line based uh, utilities, they will assume there's no pin anyway, so the chances are pretty slim there. Uh, other things, some people um, have used the cards to generate an SSH certificate, uh, uh, public key, and then you can actually use the card to log in using SSH. I've never tried this myself, but reportedly it's possible. I've heard of people who've done it. Um, PAM is not yet possible, but it would be nice. Uh, you can actually, there, are some, there is some work on an OpenSC uh, authentication module. Um, it is possible on Solaris. Uh, there are actually PAM modules for Solaris with the AAD card. And people using Sun hardware often speak about how they forget their smart cards after logging in. And then uh, there are, I've, I've also heard reports of companies where they came back from using the, 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 the cards as, an, uh, as a login system because everybody forgot it. But uh, it's possible on Solaris. Um, yeah, and I think that would, that's about it. I can still show you how the uh, module in, in Firefox works. If you give me a few seconds. Oh, uh, internet. Nice weasel. Yeah, um, the state in, in, in Edge is that it works easier with uh, PCSC than with OpenCT. Sometimes OpenCT has this weird idea, uh, weird disconnection about with the world. Um, but uh, in Unstable, it's much better. I've put a lot of work there, so for Lenny, it will be much better and hopefully we will not have these issues anymore. <laughs> and this machine runs Edge, so that's why I see. Um, if you go to advanced here, we can go to uh, encryption, and then we have security devices. This will show us um, what security devices we have. There is none for the EID card here yet. But if I go to that page, uh, I'm not going to type everything there. And I open this web page. It gives me um, a warning. Are you sure you want to install the security module? Because that might be a problem. And I'm saying, yeah, I want to do that. And now it's running the JavaScript. And that's all. And then we get a nice message that it's been installed as well. So if you go to the same page again, you will see that under security devices, it's actually there. Um, I wanted to go to a website that requires me to do uh, smart card authentication, but of course not going to be possible. So we'll uh, end here. Are there still any more questions? Or yeah? You talked about when uh, for signing that uh, uh, the library 
library itself goes up in a QT message. Yes, yeah, Does that's correct. Does that mean that uh, if you have a uh, card reader with integrated pads that it won't use Yeah, integrated? currently, unfortunately, there are no card readers with integrated pads that work on the Linux. So you can't use those anyway. Uh, if you use Windows, it's the same code base. And the software on the Windows will detect you have a part uh, one with a with a pin, so that will will work properly. And once there is actually a card reader which it's a personal spot on Linux with a with a pin uh, uh, with with the keypad mm -hmm. itself, then you should not not have that this uh, problem with because it's exactly the same code base. Um, but currently, yeah, you can't use those anyway. So anything else? Anyone else? Yeah. Um, some specific license, uh, it's not GPL or something, but um, it is in Debian main, so it's free software. But uh, I can show you if you want, if you're very interested. Well, it's, 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 it's just there in four languages, French, English, German, and Dutch. But it, it's um, something modified uh, MIT, I believe, you know, something like that. It's, it's, not, it's not really... GPL compatible. It is GPL compatible, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. I still have to uh, get a card to play those things. Uh, which one? Um, there, there are these. Uh, if they mention EID card reader, they are usually compatible. Um, they are usually uh, using the ACR 38U uh, driver. Um, especially if they say Zetis, then they are the, you, then they are definitely using the uh, ACR 38U card reader, and those are really really good. Oh, I didn't know that. Good. Do you, do you have the website? Maybe I should try it on. Oh yeah, right, right. Okay. So it's 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 uh, it, it's it's not very hard in in any case to find a card reader that works. Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you for your attention then.